Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside Australia's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I'll be your host for today's show. We are at the Governance Institute of Australia National Conference and it's a gathering of company secretaries and corporate directors uh, all trying to get their arms around some of the latest issues on governance and uh, what's happening in the boardroom. So um, today's show, we're going to take a look at structuring continuing education for corporate boards. And joining me is Carl Middlehurst, who's the VP, General Counsel, and Company Secretary for Appen Limited. So welcome, Carl. Thank you. So education maybe isn't at the top of the list as far as things that you have to worry about, but it, it certainly is an issue that in some way the company secretary is involved. So um, in my travels through US, UK, Europe, when I'm looking, um, one of the challenges is how do directors keep pace um, with all the changes that are happening? Because some are retired, not in business anymore, they don't have access maybe to the resources that they had when they were an active CEO or CFO or whatever their role was. So this issue of continuing education, talk a little bit about what your experience is with Australian companies and sort of what their philosophy is with that. What's your involvement as a COSEC with that and, and how do you sort of think through the issue of continuing education? So yeah, I'm only about six months into Appen, so I haven't done a, a full sort of cycle with them. So I haven't sort of experienced uh, their, uh, their model, but I can certainly talk about uh, uh, other other companies. Um, I think, I mean, the best practice in the ASX sort of corporate governance principles would suggest that, you know, corporations should engage in sort of a, a skills assessment process, um, you know, developing a matrix um, and then looking at what skills the board currently has, what skills the board might need to have, um, you know, in future. And I think that's something that, um, you know, a company secretary has uh, traditionally always been involved with. Um, working with the chair very closely to ensure that they can understand what skills they have, what gaps they have, and therefore how they can, um, or the types of steps that they can take to close those gaps. Sometimes you might be looking at bringing some, you know, a new person onto the board, and of course, you know, that's uh, one model to ensure that you refresh and, uh, you know, have the right, uh, right people around that table. Separately, of course, um, you'd want to be looking at um, developing, uh, you know, education programs, continuing education programs for those, for those directors who are there. The chair, I think, is you know, instrumental in ensuring that uh, the board understands the, the need, the relevance of having those sorts of skills um, continuously made relevant um, for the market that you're in and the changing market that, that we're all in, of course. Given the markets that I've always worked in, which is you know, the, the tech sector generally, I mean, the external market factors and the ability to sort of vision you know, beyond the current um, state of affairs is, is a key thing for the board to be able to do and you know I'm not saying that you know boards of course are a collective and so that you need amongst the board to have you know the relevant sort of skills I'm not saying everyone should have a PhD in pure maths um, but obviously you need to have you know the ability to sort of ask the right questions you know ask that famous sort of why question um, about you know the future state or the future market that you're trying to tackle trying to enter trying to engage so yeah I, I think that's um, th that's a uh, that's something that the company secretary, you know, is involved in with the chair, um, you know, to ensure that uh, the opportunities are available for, for the for the board um, broadly, um, either you know on an in individual basis or you know as a as a, right. as a collection sort of thing. It's not to say that um, you know opportunities shouldn't be available for an individual director, um, but equally there are often uh, topics and um, areas that you know the board as a whole should should engage on. And that gets down to bringing somebody into the board when everybody's together or as you say either individually or collectively visiting you know and it may be as simple as visiting one of your operations of your businesses as a educational tool and i think i mean setting aside you know the company secretary also has a as a strong role in ensuring that um the board um calendar is arranged such that you have the opportunity to have those sorts of opportunities have those sorts of meetings sort of thing whether it's yeah to go out to a division to understand what they're doing in a particular country or place or vertical um, or um, you know to ensure that you know there is time set aside you know with a board meeting and with the board calendar generally for the year um, to ensure that those those um, types of uh, types of you know events can be 
can be uh, held within the, the, the time frames that are yeah. allowed. And I, you know, I think failing, failing to ensure that the time is available will almost guarantee that um, it doesn't happen. And I think that's a real, a, a real issue is, um, you know, boards contain busy people. Um, you know, they may have multiple commitments, etc. You need to ensure that you factor that in, um, you know, to their calendars um, in order to be respectful to, you know, to those other commitments right. that they have. So, so um, I know you spent a, a lot of your time in the tech world. Um, um, this particular question isn't just tech related, but I'm, in your travels and in my travels, we've all come across board members who sort of feel um, that uh, I don't need any education, you know, I'm fine. And whether it's something that's current, like the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act that they should uh, understand, uh, that has big fines associated with it, or maybe even more importantly, um, things like AI or blockchain that are really going to be part of a uh, planning and strategy going forward. And all of a sudden, you may be sitting with a board where there's nobody on the board that during their career dealt with um, artificial intelligence or blockchain or whatever. Okay. So there, there comes a, um, at least an awareness that this is something that we have to keep people current on if they aren't taking that initiative themselves. Yeah. I mean, there are certain, um, and yeah, we don't necessarily have to limit it to technology, but there are certain sort of trends in society which are going to obviously impact um, the way that businesses can operate in the future and you know a good example probably is is artificial intelligence machine intelligence um, you know because it's going to have you know not just the impact of you know human decisions being replaced by a machine decision but it's also going to have an impact potentially on the workforce the nature of the workforce um, you know s certain societal impacts as well will flow from that so I, I think it's really important to understand it not just in terms of the context of the technology itself but the likely impact of that technology, you know, on society broadly, and therefore the society in which your company is going to operate. Um, things like artificial intelligence or mach machine intelligence. I mean, the no one's. I mean, you may have a director or you know a couple of directors who who have some experience in it or have um, maybe a background in you know maths or something that allows them to sort of have a better understanding of the technology. But I, I think I mean the real. Um, the real thing is that if you're, I think for a board is to understand what the impact of this technology is. And, you know, a, a classic example is that, you know, you're, you're replacing a, a human decision with a machine decision. And so what you need to be able to understand is how good is that decision? And I don't mean good just as in like, is it a better decision than the other decision, but how ethical is it? How does it sort of, um, how will it resonate uh, within um, your business and the way that your business operates, how will the external um, people perceive, you know, decisions made by such technology. So I think boards need to be able to sort of um, ask questions about the impact of that technology. It's, you know, it's the famous why question. Why is it doing this? Why is it doing that? W you know, w w what, w what is this for? I mean, I, I think there's lots of questions that you can ask without necessarily having sort of a perfect understanding of the underlying technology, but you do need to understand the trends and the technology and its impact that it's going to have on your business and, and society. So yeah, I, I think um, getting someone in to be able to provide sort of some basic training on that. And then I think the other one though is that it's, um, there's lots of great literature on the ethics of AI and you know, all that sort of stuff. You can find you know, tome, um, you know, volumes on, on that sort of thing. But the important thing to me is translating that into action. And, um, and I, as I mentioned before that like a friend has started this um, this uh, it's, called, it's called the Gradient Institute, and there are a bunch of engineers who are studying how you translate that sort of that ethical sort of question at a high level into action, and what things you might need to do to um, design the algorithm better, have the algorithm run better, train the algorithm better. This, I mean, the algorithms fail for two reasons: either the algorithm is not working that well, or you haven't trained it enough. You haven't provided a large enough data set in order for it to be able to understand a particular to recognize a particular thing or a pattern sort of thing. So I think, you know, it's really important that you have people like that who can help a board understand the types of things you can do to be able to address that, that type yeah. of technology. So we have about a minute and a half left, but I wanted to ask you, um, in your experience over the years at the companies you were at, did they have a budget that was dedicated to the board for education where a director didn't have to feel sheepish about coming forward or whatever? 
um, and is it, it, and sort of what's your feelings on you know formalizing sort of that thing? Yeah, I mean, I think in the past, um, you know, training budgets have been associated with pretty much all line items and sort of thing. The board was another line item, and there was a training budget associated with that. And I think that's a really good thing. And I think. In, more importantly sometimes, of course, is to budget not just the money but also the time. Yeah. Um, and by having the time available, and again it's a question of respect, ensuring that the directors know that they're signed up for four hours or whatever it is and that there's a regular cycle for this sort of thing. I think setting that sort of tone and that sort of expectation is really important. I think that may also address, as you said, some sort of, you know, if there is some sort of sheepishness, I'm, and no one likes to put up their hand and, you know, say that they don't know something. Um, and I think, you know, by having that as a expectation, having sort of the chair setting that sort of like requirement, that belief that this is a good and important thing for the company to engage in, I think that's, you know, um, as important perhaps sometimes as putting aside the money. Yeah. Well, Cara, I want to thank you for um, having this discussion with me on this important topic and taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Okay, thank you. And that will conclude this edition of uh, diligence inside Australia's boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again soon with another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.